Alrighty, welcome to a three on three cube draft. Uh, I've got myself, uh, let's see, I got myself, Austin, and Nacho battling against Jbro, Terabad, and Mati. And I'm going to take Mox Sapphire over Thopter Foundry, Portal of Phyrexia, Ignoble Hierarch. Ooh, good to know there's a, uh, that's to go on with Thopter Foundry. So there's a Sword of the Meek and a Thopter Foundry in the running. There is a Shieldred, a Solitude, Nexus of Fate, a new edition where we are playing Frog's Cube and Snapcaster Mage. Let's see, what do we want to follow up with this Mox Sapphire? Um, I think I'm gonna take, well, I'm gonna take one of these two elementals. Well, I guess the Supreator, sorry. I um, I think I'll probably just take Shieldred. Shieldred's great. The only downside is that Carl Terabad, he always, not always, but like very frequently plays black. Black mid-range is I think one of his favorite um, decks to draft so I'm not I'm not that happy about taking a black card but on the other hand I think Shieldred is a bit better than Solitude don't like passing the sword I could slam the sword but then if Thopter doesn't wield that's bad plus Shieldred's just absurd all right we'll take Shieldred here and try to figure out where we're going oh Time Twister and Grief and Ponder Mar double fetches this is a good pack let's see one two three four five six so <clears throat> I might get like a Teferi back. <clears throat> Excuse me, he's a little coffee here. <clears throat> or a Deep Cavern Bat, but I'm going to take Time Twister. T Twister's great with both Shield and Sapphire. And my estimation of the draw sevens just keeps going up. It just turns out there's a lot of ways to make them awesome. And uh, that is, uh, they're just powerful cards to begin with. So pretty happy with that. This is a pretty strong first three picks, especially in a six player draft. But... Carl is very aware uh, that he's passing Shieldred into Time Twister or, or Grief, so I don't know how he's going to, which one he's going to actually put me on. But, oh, I'm going to take Dark Ritual here. I do like Life Death. The reanimates are good, but Ritual's great with Shieldred and great with Time Twister. There's also a Leovold, which I don't, I'm not going to count on getting back, but this is a good pack too. Like, <clears throat> in a six-player draft, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like, I'm going to get something good back, but I just put a premium on fast mana. And the more cards you, from beta you can take in the cube, the better. All the, the only cards that have survived in the cube from the very first magic sets, I guess alpha, technically the first set, uh, th those cards have to be pretty good. Like we're talking Lightning Bolt, Swords to Plowshares, Counterspell, Dark Ritual, the power cards, Dual Lands. Like if, they, if they're here from the first set, it, it, it means that they got something good going on. I mean, every card in the cube, just about, is pretty strong, but the beta cards especially so. So here there's a fetch land. I do like fetches, but I think I'm supposed to just take Toxic Deluge. This card is very strong. Great against green and white decks. Okay against red decks. And there's also like a Chain Lightning, Sika's Chariot, uh, Walking Ballista, Mana Confluence. I'm just going to take Deluge here. And got to make it so you can see the Time Twister art. Time Twister is a lot better. Uh, we've got a very good start and pretty interested to see how this pans out. But right now we're looking at like some combination of control slash combo. Uh, and here, I th as much as I hate it, I'll take Inquisition over Thief of Sanity. I think Inquisition is not only good as an early interaction that works nicely with what I have, but also Thief's a multicolored card. Fewer decks at the table can play it. Like, it's not 0% that it wheels, right? If someone wants Spars, Headquarters, Spire Bluff, very easy to imagine. Ashen Rider, Ephemerate, maybe Bitter Reunion. Like, I don't think Thief is going to wheel, but uh, I'd rather take that over Inquisition. Now I'm going to take Night's Whisper. I could take the Thopter Foundry. So, how likely is it that taking the Thopter Foundry is good. Night's Whisper is a really good card. I don't know. Is Carl going to pass me Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meek? Is he going to count on me not wanting to take it? I don't know. I think I'm just going to take the Night's Whisper and uh, hope that the if someone, the other person who took Sword, Thopter Foundry, or, or hope someone else took Sword of the Meek, then it's not uh, one of my enemies. But we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I think just take locking in a very good card. Night's Whisper is awesome. Is a lot better here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And something good actually still might come back out of this pack. I think 
there's a chance that there's three cards left. Concealing Curtains could be one of the three, though there is like five green cards, so that's less likely. Oh, now there's the sword. Mm, so now I, I'm kind of in the same spot. Like, do I hate the Sword of the Meek or do I take Mesmeric Fiend? Passing to Mati, who... If he takes the th sword and has Thopter Sword, that is pretty good. The, the thing is that the combo is good, but it's not like unbeatable or anything. I, I'm The jury's still out for me on like how, how great that combo is. I think I'm just going to take Mesmeric Fiend and see how that goes. Oh, Deep Cavern Bat Wheel. I love this card. It's way better than the card I just took. Uh, Deep Cavern Bat is 1-1 one, one Flying Lifelink, and when it enters the battlefield, it uh, steals a card until it dies. Or, sorry, I forgot to make the cards a little bigger. Um, whoa, I don't want all those cards. I just want the Deep Cavern Bat. And I like it more than Teferi. Xander's Lounge is also very good, a blue-black land. But I think I'll just take the Deep Cavern Bat. I think this card is awesome. Oh, Leovold Wield? All right, I'll take Leo. Now I have Leo Shieldred. Yeah, I'm very happy about that. And uh, we've got a potential draw seven sort of deck going on here. So we'll, we'll see if that, if that ends up playing out. Very good start to a blue black deck here also i don't have that many blue cards i just have time twister sapphire obviously is like a blue source that i'm going to play no matter what and then leovold so we'll see how this goes nurturing peatland works kind of nicely with the leovold and i'm passing a loran but that's i'm not too too broken up about that okay well not surprised that i didn't wheel but there is a spire bluff and a wither bloom command Witherbloom Command is a, is a pretty strong card. I could see playing this card. And not surprised that nothing too exciting wheeled out of that pack. I think I'll take Manamorphose, but I don't know. Mind Collapse is the best card. Okay, so going into pack two, I'm looking for just decent blue-black cards, mostly. Oh, Tendril's last pick. I have a Dark Ritual and a Time Twister and a Mox. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not ruling out Tendril's. Tendril's could definitely be part of the plan here. All right, pack two. Mm, not an ideal pack two because there's a Comet Stellar Pup is the best card. I don't really love passing that. I might just take Misty Rainforest. There is True Name Nemesis, and that card is good. Same with like Recurring Nightmare, Noble. These are all fine cards. But I think a Blue Green Land is going to be pretty good. I, I don't know. My, I mean, I, this definitely could be a True Name Nemesis deck, but also it doesn't have to be. Let's just take the Blue Green Land. I really, I, I value fixing. I mean, I did take Deep Cavern Bat over Xander's Lounge, which to, to give you a measure of the strength, I wouldn't have taken uh, Mesmeric Fiend over Xander's Lounge. Well, here it makes me glad I took Misty because I'm going to take Undermount Adventure. Four mana, three, four, take the initiative, taps for double green, great card. And then there's Dismember, Gaunti, Liliana, Imperial Seal, Bob. And this is looking like a pretty good Bob deck. I'll be happy if one of those wheels, Dismember's not going to because it's a colorless card, but it seems like a black card is going to come back here. So I, I like the, the kind of value Sultai decks, and that looks like where we're headed here. We've got some good fixing. Zagoth Triumph would be a very high priority for me. Um, could use a little removal. I guess I have Toxic Deluge as my only creature interaction, though Mesmeric Fiend and Deep Cavern Vat do a pretty good job of interacting with, like, whatever, if they come out ahead, they can take cre creatures or, or whatever. And... I have some good mana acceleration with Ritual and Sapphire. We're not at Tendrils yet. This isn't looking like a Tendrils deck currently, but it certainly could be one depending on how things pan out here. Okay, wow. Underworld Breach, Vampiric Tutor, Upheaval, Manifold Key, a lot of strong cards, Probe, Emrakul. I'm going to take Vamp. Vamp with Leovold, Shieldred, Time Twister, Undermount Adventure, like that's all very good to Vamp for. Like setting up the Leo or Shieldred plus Twister combo, getting a Dark Ritual so I can turn to an Undermount Adventure, that sort of thing. And pass up on Probe and Manifold Key. Here it is a pretty easy Bloodstained Mire. I don't have a way to turn it into like relevant colors for me yet, but I'm sure that that's going to be something I can pick up. This is just kind of a weak pack too. The, I took the best card by so much. There's like Fertile Ground for some green decks. There's Zurin Orb if you have like the combos that go with Zurin Orb. There's uh, Oriok Salvagers like. Yeah, Oriok Salvagers is for people lucky enough to have Black Lotus or Lion's Eye Diamond. That's usually not me. Uh, this pack, oh, I love Force of Negation, but I'm really light on blue cards. I just have Twister and Leo. There's 
Blooming Marsh, that's a little weak to take here. I could take Exploration and then be more black green. This gives me a little more ramp. <clears throat> There's also V click, which isn't which isn't bad. But I have some pretty good fours and time twister. I think exploration looks pretty good. And then maybe blooming marsh or Uro or virtue wheel, because someone's gonna take Otari, someone's gonna take force. Someone might take talisman or oath. I think there's a pretty decent chance I get something I want back here. This pack has nothing for me. I might just hate the Chandra, <laughs> Zerda, and Kinnan in the same pack. Do I like? I don't really want, even want Mindstone in this deck, and Chandra is just a very strong card. So, I mean, there's also a Rabble Master there. I don't know. It just didn't seem like I was getting anything out of that pack. <clears throat> Let's see what comes back here. And. I'm looking for a blue-black duel would be very valuable here. So at some point I would like that. Recurring Nightmare came back. I guess I'll probably take that. There's also Noble. Well, look, here's the thing. Recurring Nightmare coming back means Carl probably isn't in Reanimator or you would have just taken it the first time. And Noble is looking pretty good in this deck. I am. It's two of my th it taps for blue or green. This is looking like a base green deck if I want to play like Exploration or like my main colors being like green-black. Yeah, I actually, and it doesn't really look like a great recurring nightmare deck. Let's just take Noble, and then now Bob got taken. That's unfortunate. I, I was hoping to get that back. I might take Restless Vinestalk. Oh, they're leaving still three double black cards in the pack, which makes it, I think, decently likely that, like, look, as long as someone takes Bone Crusher and Sahili, eh, I probably won't get anything back. I might get an Abrupt Decay back, but... This isn't really a Liliana deck or a Grave Titan deck. It could be a Gonti deck, fine, but I actually really like Restless Vine Stock. I've been really impressed with this card. Makes it turns into a 5-5 trample, but also that also turns one of the uh, another creature into a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, now there's Sylvan Caryatid. Exploration is nice with upheaval, but this isn't really an upheaval deck. Like the curve is just not such to like I have a mox and an exploration. Does that make this for a good upheaval deck? I mean, it's a great card, obviously. Probe is also good, but I don't think I need that too much. I can look at their hand a lot with all these. I have a lot of effects that do that. I think I'm just going to take Sylvan Karyatid. And then I guess now I'm the one who takes Fertile Ground, because by the now that this pack has rolled around, I've turned into more of a green drafter. I'm basically drafting Black, Green, Splash, Time Twister, Leo, which I'm totally happy with. Okay, V-Click and Blooming Marsh both wield. I think I should just take the Blooming Marsh here. I do like V-Click with Leo, and it's kind of like a minor combo with Shieldred, but I'll do that. I'll take Life from Alone in case like I get a Strip Mine Pack 3. I uh, don't care about passing any of those. And let's see. I mean, we're looking pretty good going into Pack 3. I'm not missing too much, I don't feel like. I, I, I wouldn't mind... I guess a draw 7 is pretty hard. The name sticker Goblin's fine. I'm just hating it. Uh... Another draw seven would be nice, but there's not that many more I could get. Okay, Gaunti and Sahili came back. Well, I'll also just take the Gaunti. Huh, I'm kind of surprised by that. So I get I just normally don't don't think that people take Abrupt Decay. So not that I'm too worried. I mean, I would have played Abrupt Decay, but I have Witherbloom Command. It's like kind of similar, and uh, yeah, this is looks totally good. I do want a blue back duel. That would be really nice to pick up. But. The only other draw sevens, there's Echo of Eons, which this deck would have a little bit of trouble using because I like that card better when you can discard it. And there's Time Spiral, which costs six. At this point, the Tendrils is looking not great. Uh, brick of a pack for me. I can't really justify Days or Time Warp by probably just first picking a Bayou, which at least makes Bloodstained Mire into a Black Greenland. It's just, these cards aren't good enough to hate, and none of them are good for me, so I'll just take a land. I mean, obviously, I mean, it's a disappointing first pick, but what are you going to do? I, I could stretch the mana to play Time Warp, but that just doesn't seem right. Okay, so this pack has From the Catacombs, which I, I like quite a bit, Infernal Grasp, which is solid, a fetch land I'm not going to take, and a Questing Beast, which I also like Questing Beast a lot, but I'm going to take From the Catacombs. That's just a great card to accelerate to. I've got ways to fill up my graveyard. I have Dark Ritual, like... From the Catacombs is a good card. Puts a creature back into play from either graveyard under your control and you take the initiative. So that one seems good. Uh, I don't love the Fertile Ground here. I could play it. 
part of the denial of fertile ground is that you end up being pretty vulnerable to a wasteland or strip mine, though obviously you try to put it on a basic if you can. But even stuff like Cryptic Commander Venser just kind of hoses you by bouncing the land it's on. And it's not a creature, which sometimes it can be good if you have like balance in your deck or you're playing against Wraths. But most of the time, you'd rather just have like a Sylvan character is a much, much better version of that. So there's a chance I'll wheel Questing Beast. Not a very big one. I think this pack, Arid Mesa, Grasp, Reprieve are going to get taken. And Questing Beast is the best green card in the pack, but maybe someone wants an elf because they're more of an elf deck or a Rex Age or something. And then someone would have to take, I guess, Embreath Shield Breaker. Oh, Fast Bond. Okay. There's also Pest Infestation. Huh. I mean, I do like Fast Bond. I have one draw seven. There's also a, a Blue Green Land, which I like. A Parallax Sword, which I don't like seeing. Uh, there's also a Narset, but I don't think I'm taking that. Kind of feel like I should just take Pest Infestation. That card is so busted. I just don't think there's very many decks at a six-player table that can use Fast Bond. Like, maybe, I don't think I'm going to wheel it, but I think Parallax Wave's going to go, Narset's going to go, Fast Bond's going to go. And I might get back Olvenwald Oddity or Botanical Sanctum, but I'm going to take Pest Infestation. And maybe I follow it up with Mosswood Dread Knight. This is the one deck that can use it, but... I guess it's kind of foolish to take a card which is really unlikely to be taken by anyone else. There's also Manglehorn, which is pretty nice against our artifacts. And I, I just picked up a Pest Infestation, which makes me a little less prone to do that. And Bloodstained Mire already gets green with uh, with Bayou here. Hmm. hmm. It's not even like there's a great card to hate draft. I mean, I guess I could hate a Luminarch Aspirant. I'll just take the Dread Knight. It's just going to be good in this deck. Whatever. Ooh, this is a great Fallen Shinobi deck. I've got Deep Cavern Bats. I've got Mosswood Dread Knight. I have Mesmeric Fiend. These are all like just early creatures that are good. But oh no, I got to take Jar. Jar Shieldred is 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 just game over. And Jar Leovold is pretty strong. Also, I, again, I'm not. <clears throat> it's not like I'm counting on Wheeling Shinobi, but there's a chance it does because you have to be a very specific deck to use it. Okay. So I picked up another draw seven. Oh wow, I could take Teferi's Puzzle Box. The problem with taking Teferi's Puzzle Box is it's a great combo with Leo and it's good with Shieldred, but no, very few people can use it. I kind of want to just take Indothatrium or Waterlog Grove and someone's going to take Pyro, someone's going to take Magda, someone's definitely going to take Pented Prism. Let's see. Uh, I'll take Waterlog Grove, I think. I think that'll be good in this deck. And then now the Days Wield. Let's see. Um, I mean, I guess I could just take the Days, even if I don't end up playing it. Which I probably won't, because a lot of my blue sources are also not uh, Islands of Restless Fine Stock and Waterlog Grove, because I'm not getting a black, a blue-black land. To get with Bloodstained Mire, that's okay. Okay, Questing Beast didn't come back, but Infernal Grasp did. I, I'm actually happy with Infernal Grasp, so I'll take that. And let's see if Fast Bond comes back. Okay, it actually did, so I'll take it. I was right that not that many people could use it, and I think it'll still be fine here. I have a Memory Jar now, too. So, and maybe I'll get a last... No, I'll get a last pick Monster Manual. I was going to say, maybe I'll get a last pick Terra Sunder. Here, I could take Lotus Veil... But I don't think that does much for me. I'm not playing. Uh, I'm not playing Life in the Loam in my deck. So, and if someone wanted Workshop, they would have taken it. I'll just take the the Flame Tongue, I guess. Mm, what else? So it's just right now. It says 30 cards, 10 land. It's 17 land plus a Sapphire, which I actually don't mind. Playing a little heavier on mana when you have Exploration and Fast Bond. Mm. What else do we got here? I guess we're not really going to wheel much else. Oh, I could play this Manamorphose. I ended up being a lot heavier green than I thought when I took the Manamorphose, so maybe that makes the cut. Okay. Um, I think I'll put Odawara in my deck. I do like this card, and passing a Wandering Emperor is not ideal, but I don't think that card's like crazy good. Oh, Puzzle Box didn't come back. That's fine. Uh... I still I, I like it a lot more with like Hole Breacher because the problem I have with Puzzle Box Leovold or Puzzle Box Shieldred is like you have to play the big creature and then have it live for a turn and then play the Puzzle Box. 
Or you could, I guess, play Puzzle Box first, but that's kind of a weak play. I think I'll just take Might Stone and Weak Stone and pass three red cards and then take Usher. I'll, I mean, I'll take Rafellos, though I don't, I'm not going to play Rafellos. Rafellos is really not that good. Also, I, I again, have, I have like four green sources that aren't, <laughs> that aren't green lands. All right, let's, uh, let's get this going here. See how this works out. Okay. All right, so, I mean, I think the, the real question is, do I want to play like 17 land in a mox? And I think I picked up like one more card that I would have to take a look at. Uh, I have to delete stupid name goblin that I'm not even going to play. All right, that's fair, that's fair. Because I, I, I like the idea of 17 land plus a mox, and this is, yeah, there were one over here. I don't think I want Tendrils here. I'm just not going to get up to that many spells. I think I could probably just not play the Mana Morphos. Um, my mana is pretty good here. I have Misty as a Tri-Land, Bloodstained Mire, Bayou, and like six dual lands, plus Noble and Sylvan Karyatid. It is nice with From the Catacombs. It's just like an extra card that goes to the graveyard. Days can't be good. No, there's no way, because I'm going to play like just a couple islands. There's also Fertile Ground. But I think with Fast Bond and Exploration, I'd rather just play another land. I didn't wield the Fallen Shinobi, unfortunately, but I think that's okay. Okay. Yeah, this looks pretty good to me. I, no notes. Let's get to the game, shall we? Alrighty, time for round one. I would like to keep this hand because this hand's awesome. This is the, the hand you dream of with Exploration, where it's like turn one, Exploration, Vinestock, turn two, Dread Knight, or Witherbloom Command, or maybe both. I am playing against a Tinker deck who, like Terabad, has Tinker for Portal and a great update on the Sword of the Meek Thopter Foundry situation. Hmm. What is this? Turn one Tinker? Okay, well, sure. I guess that's fine. <laughs> Time warp. <laughs> All right, well, I'm getting turn one killed over here. Uh, the good news is my teammate uh, Nacho, Jose B, has um, both the... Sword of the Meek and the Thopter Foundry. So he got them both. So I, I do like that. I'll, I'll take a look at our, my teammates' decks in a second here. After I complain that I'm going to get turn one killed. <laughs> uh, he's at three. I can almost Wither Bloom him to death. But we'll, we'll see. I got I to gotta show them this. Like, Mana Crypt into Tinker, huh? Uh... I'm going to go Forest, Exploration. The fact that he's at three life means I technically have a chance, and I don't really care. Showing these cards is uh, not a particularly big cost to me. If for some reason he gets greedy because I'm playing blue-green, it doesn't look like a burn deck, and he plays a card off Citadel, goes down to two or something. Not that I think he's going to do that because of like collective brutality and the like. It would be cool, though. Okay. So here I think I'm going to go Swamp, Swamp, Go, and uh, Odawara, one of the Frexian Horror tokens. Let's see if he uses Nissa to give them plus one, plus one, or plus two, plus two each. No, he did not, so unsurprisingly. Okay, Odawara, you're 9-9. Nine, nine. And... I can't make them draw a card and lose a life. I can drain them for two, but uh, is there any chance he plays he plays a, a card off the top? I don't really think so. I'm at four. Uh, let's go Mesmeric Fiend. Maybe that can induce tapping the mana confluence? Hmm? No, I don't think so either. Okay, well... That is uh, not a very close game, as it turns out. Uh, but what are you going to do? I'm not putting in tendrils for that. I think I'm just submitting my deck and hoping I don't get turn one. Very unfortunate set of results here. So Austin has 
This is my teammate has a red, black, white aggro, basically ended up cutting like the animate stuff. And it's like Mox Diamond into Magda, Bowmasters, Lelia, Rabble Master, Fire Covenant, Grief, Confluence, Splash of Minsk and Boo, Comet, Fourth Year, Lingus and Othari. So that that's a pretty nice set. Don't mind that. And then uh, let me see if Jose B posted his actual deck. Uh, I guess he didn't. I'm, I'm going to let it be. He's He's got enough going on. Uh, so we've got uh, a pretty good Tinker deck on the other side with Mana Crypt, Tinker, Portal of Phyrexia, Bolus of Citadel, Time Warp. And I don't know what's up with that, like Nissa. That doesn't seem to fit really, but maybe it just has random green cards in there. Don't think I uh, need anything else here. I mean, I have Pest Infestation, Wither Bloom Command. Those are both pretty good against uh, him. I think uh, obviously Shieldred and Leovold would be would be quite strong. So, and so does is Inquisition, Mesmeric Fiend, Deep Cavern Vat. But like I was on the draw and my opponent played twenty things on turn one. It was Force of Will or Bust there, and in this case it was Bust. So let's hope that doesn't happen again, shall we? I hope you like the new background, by the way. Uh, Gabby actually went and decorated the rest of the stream room because I had I was just like never going to get around to it, but. <laughs> I think it looks sweet. All right, I would like to play first. And yeah, I'll keep this hand. I really would like to draw another land, but because like the exploration isn't doing a whole lot for me. I get to go Forest, Exploration, Odawara. Ooh, well, maybe he had a Forest, that would be sick. And then turn two, Karyatid. If I draw a, a land to cast Inquisition at the same time, that would be nice. And then one land gets me pretty close to Jar, at which point Jar exploration is pretty strong too. Uh, Sylvan Karyatid, and of course I didn't draw land. Let's see. Oh, also my teammate Nacho has a Lurus Sword Thopter deck, which is even sweeter. Okay. I guess let's hope we're not getting turn two tinkered here. Main phase... This wasn't end of turn. This is now main phase, breeding pool, consider, mill, bolsa, citadel. I like that. And forest, go. Okay, okay. Still really want to draw black source. That is a black source. So let's start with Inquisition then. I just don't want to risk getting tinkered. I think it would be foolish to play to like, because I'm, I'm going to cast Dread Whispers, but yeah. Okay, so uh, what is this? Okay, Force of Will, Mana Drain, I don't like that. I don't care about Dismember. Vendillion click into Shinobi's Annoying. Uh, this is just going to come down to whether Carl can draw a blue source or not. Honestly, the Mana Crypt is the best card, but it doesn't do that much right now. I think I'm just going to take Vendillion click and play Nurture and Peatland and cast Dread Whispers, leaving a green up here. I also haven't played a land yet, so if I draw a land... Or haven't played a second land yet, rather. So if I draw a land, I can play Mosswood Dread Knight. Okay. Didn't force that, which is nice. And that means this gets to get by you, I'm sure. And cast the Mosswood Dread Knight. <clears throat> and now I'm not as afraid of Mana Drain. And uh, I really don't care. Dismembering is like actively good for me. Okay, Carl drew, drew the blue immediately. but And has Mana Drain up now. So I just won't play the uh, memory jar here. I'm going to attack with the Moss of Dread Knight, though. And I don't think I even crack the Peatland. I think I just play Restless Vinestalk, which is next turn going to attack for an additional five. Can't get Manager and can get Dismembered, but I don't have to. Actually, the Dismember actually changed my mind. I will sack this now. I draw, land. Let's just attack with the Moss of Dread Knight. Pass the turn. I just don't really feel like I don't really feel like running restless fine stock into dismember and I really don't want to play jar or pest infestation into mana drain that obviously does not make sense oh are we dismembering now wild I can cast it as an adventure into as the end of my next turn okay uh, Let's see. All right. I don't know why I couldn't cast it there. So I can cast Dread Whispers as a sorcery here. Mm, I mean, 
It's the end of my next turn. Yeah, I'll just cast it now. If he, if he wants to mana drain it, I guess that that's fine. I, I assume he's going to if this is the play. Oh, Fairy Mastermind. Oh, we're trying to fall in Shinobi. Well, I'm going to kill the Fairy Mastermind with Infernal Grasp here. And if you want a Force of Will to protect it, I can't stop that. But it does cost you Mana Drain or Fall in Shinobi. And I guess you force Pitching Mana Drain on the Infernal Grasp and really hope to draw a, blue, a Black Source to Fall in Shinobi. But the thing is that it's not even that good because what ends up happening I mean that is that is what's going to happen you're going to draw an extra card so you're going to have two looks at a black source but I'm going to get to where to go cast Mosswood Dread Knight here I think um actually yeah I don't think I'm supposed to cast Pest, Pest Infestation I think I cast the Dread Knight and if I get hit by Shinobi which I probably will then I hope, oh, not getting hit by Shinobi, that is excellent news. Your hand is Mana Crypt, Fallen Shinobi, and an, another card. All right, well, I'm going to go for Divine Stock kill then. I don't think it makes sense to do anything else. I mean, this isn't literally a kill, but this puts you to one here. Uh, sure, I'll make it a 3-3. Three, three. I can't... Uh, I can't block the Fairy Mastermind anyway, so let's just do that and pass. And end of turn, going to Fairy Mastermind, sure. So at this point, Fallen Shinobi is almost assuredly going to be something that can hit. Nope. Nice. Okay, going to game three. So that, that's pretty nice. Let's uh, show the teammates that. I didn't think that game was going that well, but we managed to get there. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm, I really do like uh, Witherbloom Command in this matchup. It's looking good. Let's see if we can uh, fade an early Tinker again. Carl's deck has some really scary plays. Fallen Shinobi, Tinker with Force of Will and Mana Drain is just like, ugh. and then like Vendillion Click and Fairy Mastermind as ways to go end of turn, play a Flash Flyer into Fallen Shinobi. Really wish I had another removal spell here, but. I'm not like, trying to put in red for for these things, obviously. And I don't think I don't think I can justify days in my like two island deck or whatever. <laughs> okay, game three here on the draw. What do we got? I'm gonna keep this hand. It's not obviously like the best hand in the world, but turn one Knight's Whisper into turn three Underground Adventure. This hand can develop very very well. Swamp Sapphire. Please don't spell pierce me. All right, Knight's Whisper. Okay, not lands. Uh, so my first three draws have been pretty bad. I drew two lands and a five drop, which is really not what I wanted. Okay, Noble Hierarch is, is a little nicer. Let's go Noble. Hopefully don't get very masterminded here. Yeah, unfortunately it looks like we are. Oh, Dismember, that, that I'm actually fine with. The Noble's not really ramping me to anything. Because now I get to go Under Mountain Adventure. Oko, huh? Okay. Make a food. Well, let's go Under Mountain Adventure off of Swamp and get another forest. And let's hope Carl doesn't have a removal spell. Because if he doesn't, then Under Mountain Adventure keeps the initiative. If he does have a way to get rid of Adventure, then he can animate the food token, attack, and take the initiative. But I had no other plays this turn anyway. Oh, we're tinkering. Yeah. All right. Let's hope Citadel misses, I guess. Miss, miss, miss. It's hard to miss when you don't have a... when you, Oh, and the land you hit was a fetch land. I don't think I'm going to win here. Tinker Citadel definitely has its moments. Into Questing Beast? <laughs> Uh, all right. Also, if you tinker Citadel into questing beasts and time warps and stuff, like it's it's, it's going to be hard. I mean, once you hit the Verdant, it was over. Like that already means that you get a shuffle if you need it to. I'm not going to block here. You can get the initiative, I suppose. You get another shuffle. It, it it doesn't matter. Like 
I'm keeping this back because my out is to just draw Shieldred and cast it off Under Mountain Adventure and cast Time Twister and hope that Carl also hasn't stocked up a counter on top of the deck. I mean, all these are possibles. I could draw Shieldred and win this turn. But I don't think that's very likely. We'll have to see. Food token. Sure. And if he's not cracking Verdant, it kind of... It kind of means he likes the top card. It doesn't have to. Maybe he just doesn't want to keep going. But okay, so at least he's cracking Verdant. <laughs> Leovold Time Twister is not the same vibe. Um, is it good to play Leo? Yeah, I guess so. Let's go Leovold. What is this? Another a different counter spell? Oh, like a remand. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty dead here. I'm also just, I think, literally going to die to eight permanents off the Bolus's Citadel here. I'm going to Time Twister, leaving a green floating, because my out is to draw a Fast Bond here. And if I can draw a Fast Bond into... I don't really know what set of plays, but I'm going to try... Oh, he has Force. All right. There we go. Uh, got crushed round one. Just early tinker both times, and that'll do it, unfortunately. Alrighty, time for round two. Playing against Jabro, who's on mono green with Black Lotus, Channel, uh, Emrakul. So, ooh, I'm going to keep this hand. <clears throat> Would have been nice if I had an untapped green to lead off with, but this hand still has a very good potential because I get to go turn one, Vine Stock. I really want to just draw any land on turn two because then I can go turn two, Exploration, Night's Whisper. No. What do I do? Um, I'm just going to Dark Ritual here and cast Night's Whisper. Okay. And then now I can go Exploration, Forest, Noble. I don't think I actually want to play the, the Mosswood Dread Knight here because <clears throat> I'm just going to Time Twister next turn. It's my plan, assuming I'm not just dead to channel. <laughs> Certainly could be. Oh man, Jabra also has a has a fast hand. Oh, well, let's see what this channel is, and uh, we're getting vintage cubed hard today. <laughs> let's just put it that way. Yep, that's a turn two Emra cool. All right, cool. <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's hope that doesn't happen the next two games, shall we? Um, yeah, I've got, you know, I've got the deck I've got. I've got Inquisition. I've got Mesmeric Fiend. I've got Deep Cavern Bat. My hand was still pretty good. I was going to have a turn three time twist with like five lands in play. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, turn two Emrakul, huh? Uh, okay, I'm going to keep this hand. It doesn't have black, which is like the main drawback, but I do have a ton of acceleration here. So if I draw a black source, I can go tutor for a time twister, and it's going to be pretty good. If I miss, if I don't draw a black source, things could get uh, a little bit tougher. There we go, well, easy peasy. Let's go. Let's get. Let's get swamp. Actually, I don't really need another green. Let's cast Knight's Whisper because I could just draw another black source off of that to cast Vamp, thanks to exploration, and let's hit for one pass and then we're just going to get time twister and we're going to again go for the turn three time twister with like a ton of uh, mana in play he's less likely to have channel if he's leveling up the tree speaker there if you have channel emerald it's crazy to level up tree speaker so because you're just opening yourself up to get owned by a removal spell instead of just casting channel emerald so i'm not worried about that there here i think yeah i've got to get time twister it's so good here so let's draw land land and then Time Twister. And then... Um, I could Shieldred. I could Deluge. This is a 1-2. So unfortunately, I can't keep my Noble alive. I actually think I am going to Deluge here. It just destroys a lot of J Bro's mana. And I have so much mana. And then I can go Karyatid. And then next turn, I can play Shieldred and Gaunti in the same turn. Okay. This is a great draw, right? Like, this is... On, at the start of j turn three, he has two lands in play, seven cards in hand. 
I have six lands plus a Sylvan Karyatid and a Mox in play. So I, I feel like I put myself in a winning position. Obviously, if he just goes channel Emrakul here, then then I still lose. But I'm gonna try my best to uh, to to optimize for you know to win when Jaybro doesn't have that draw because. If you play against a mono green deck, and uh, you you know they they just go turn two chamber Emrakul every game, there's not very many decks that can do much about that. And this deck needs to have drawn Inquisition or Deep Cavern Bat or something like that. But just objectively casting Time Twister after casting Exploration, and playing two lands every turn, like I have I played two lands on turns one, two, and three with Time Twister, so I feel pretty good about my position. I've got a uh, a lot of mana, and my hand's still pretty gassy because Gaunti is like a two for one by itself, and Shieldred's obviously great. Plus, I have a nurturing peatland chilling there that I'll be able to cash in soon enough here, though. Probably not next turn because next turn I'm gonna start by casting Gaunti, seeing what I hit, and then casting Shieldred after that, most likely, unless unless the card I hit off Gaunti is better than Shieldred, which I don't think is like all that likely. All right. Okay, what does Jaybro got? An ignoble hierarch, sure. And that's it? Okay, okay, that's not bad at all. Ooh, from the catacombs is also pretty nice. Let's just play the swamp first. I don't think there's a big drawback to doing that. Gaunti seeing Buseju, oh, nothing, plus Golos, all right. Um, I think I'd rather just get a shield rid out. I can cast Golos at some point though. I guess I can. No, I, I'm actually not going to be able to. This deck doesn't have a way to ca to activate Golos's ultimate, his the the you know the the eight the seven mana. You know, flip the top three cards because I have Sylvan Karyatid, but I don't have the uh, the fifth one. Ogre Kaslim, Deepest Growth, five mana, six five. When it deals combat damage, you reveal that many to a player. You reveal that many cards, and you put a creature or land. And or a land on a, under the battlefield under that player's control. Oh, that's pretty good. Mm. Let's draw a card. Put the peat land here. Gain two life. I don't really want to cast. Well, I guess I can actually cast from the catacombs because I'm going to have enough to, to flash it back. The question is do I attack? I think I attack with Shieldred and offer the trade. Okay, great. That is kind of what I was hoping would happen. Then I can from the catacombs back the shieldred. And let's go ahead and get a swamp. Play a swamp. Play bloodstained mire. Crack it, get my last swamp. Oh, I guess there's a bayou in there. I could get two. And then I just cast Golos here. And I already have my good creature land, but I guess I can get waterlogged grove. So I don't have any way to activate Golos unless I have a Noble Hierarch in play, <laughs> which is funny. So now they have Temple of Cultivation, which can flip back into a tapped Ogier, but uh, needs 10 permanents. And that's not going to happen here, at least not very likely to. Okay. We're also making it... Like, this is the last turn where Jaybro could have channeled Emrakul Dust, probably, because I think next turn I'm going to get to hit for a decent amount of damage. Though I guess there's the Chariot. Mm. Yeah, currently the Chariot can only muster four points here. Whoa. Oh, we're animating it so we can tap Cradle. Six mana. Vorniclax, Trample, Haste, six, six, and it... Oh, I'm gonna get half as many counters with if I use Forge here. Is it 15? So I get one plus one plus one counter. Uh, let's just go into the Lost Well, because I have so much mana that if I scry into something good, yeah, let's put these both on the bottom, then it's game time. Ooh, Knight's Whisper for free. Actually, I gain two life, thanks to Shieldred. Ooh, Pest Infestation, I'll probably want that at some point here. Let's go, I think I just attack here with these two here at 15. I don't think I, want, I don't think there's a reason to throw a Golos into the mix here. You can animate a Sika's Chariot and block, but then I get to to from the Catacombs back the Gaunti. I think there's a chance this is the block. Oh, we just take it all. Okay. So 
there a reason not to cast pest infestation for a million? I don't think so. Eight, and four, yeah. Let's make eight tokens, play a vine stock, play a blooming marsh. <laughs> At some point I'll miss uh, playing a land with exploration, but I haven't yet. It's turn six and I have 12 lands in play. <laughs> oh, I guess I got one off Golo, so maybe I was short one. But uh, this game has worked out fairly nicely. It's going to be hard for you to take the initiative. I could actually potentially beat an Emrakul this turn. Mere Battle Ball. Oh, we are, we are throwing that down here with uh, the Battle Ball coming. And... Now this taps for enough mana to transform this, this thing's back. <laughs> okay. Aren't you just dead here? Is that not the case? I've got a restless vine stock too. Uh, let's go into the stash and get a treasure. And so I could make a 4-1-0 oh, Infernal Grasp. That is, I mean, that's just game then. I think I was already going to win this turn, but Infernal Grasp makes it even better. Let's attack with everything. Restless Vine Stock, uh, one of the insects. And I'm just going to Infernal Grasp whatever blocks the Restless Vine Stock, probably. Yeah, like Warren Clex. Though it's probably was lethal anyway. I mean, you get a double block Shieldred, maybe. And then block, chump, block, block. I guess it wasn't quite lethal, but okay, yeah, Jaybro conceded without that. Mm. All right. Um. Yeah, I'm ready to roll. If Jabra's ready, I'm ready. I haven't pulled off a Twister Leo or Twister Shieldred yet, or Jar, you know, any of those things. This could be the time. Also, I've drawn Exploration like five times and not drawn Fast Bond, though I think Exploration was actually kind of better that game because I just, I never needed to play like four lands in the same turn. I didn't take any damage. <laughs> not that it mattered too much. I kind of want to just open on Inquisition to make it less likely that I get channeled. Oh, nice draw. Landmox Night's Whisper is a fantastic start and then into a turn two deluge. So I hope J Bros draw is like elf into another elf. Because that would make oh no. Okay, is this like a turn on chariot or something? I mean, if it's turn one channel, it's turn one channel. Alright, turn Utopia Sprawl, sure. Turn one chariot. Alright, that is actually beatable. Let's go Knight's Whisper. I'm going to take a little damage here, but Jabra's going to crew, attack for four. I got a 14, make another cat, and hopefully play another creature this turn That's that dies to, to Pest Infestation or to Toxic Deluge. Endurance. Sure. Get your Lotus back. All right. I actually think I'm pretty far ahead here. I'm taking six now. I'm at 12, and then I'm going to take four more damage. So I'm going to go to 8, but, uh, and here an exploration would have been a fine draw there too. But after that, the chariot is still in play for now, but everything else is gone. And then I can play a Gaunty next turn, or if this is a mana dork, I can like Wither Bloom command it maybe. Oh, Metamorph the chariot? Oh my god. Yeah, we're dead. Because this means you can just immediately crew, tack me down to four, and I have three cats in play. Yeah. All right. I got Lotus out. Oh, a Dark Ritual. That, huh. Mm -hmm -hmm. Let's go... Dark Ritual. I could, from the Catacombs, Metamorph the Chariot. I could also play Gaunty and Mosswood Dread Knight. So let's see. If I play Gaunty and Mosswood Dread Knight, then if the, just the Chariot plus a cat attacks, I go block, block, die. They lose, they end up, Jabra ends up with three cats in play. If the three cats attack, I go block, block, go to two. That's probably not going to happen. If I make a Chariot, I have two cats versus three cats, and then you can crew and attack. That seems less good. So let's go Ritual. We're going to Gaunty. So I'm going to see. Maybe Jabro draws me something good here. Okay. I guess it's Elvish Mystic and three land. 
And then I'm just gonna cast Mosswood Dread Knight here and pass the turn. Dark Patrol gave me at least like a, a slight chance, but if, if Jaybro casts any more spells, I'd probably lose. And even if he doesn't, I need to draw like Pest Infestation. That would probably be my best draw. All right, so I could trade these off. Yeah, I, I just have to kill the ch Chariot, unfortunately. So I have to go Gaunti, Dread Knight. I'm at four still, but now I'm facing down three cats. I can't metamorph the Chariot anymore, unfortunately. Draga Tree Speaker. Yeah, all right. So if I from the Catacombs, I die. I could Wither Bloom Command, and part of that is gaining two life, but then what else am I doing? I guess Elvish Mystic. So yeah, if I get back Gaunti, it doesn't work. Same with like Endurance, I guess. And I can only cast the Adventure part of this. I'm trying to figure out what's my way out of this Give a creature minus three, minus one. Oof, bad. Um, no, I'm basically just dead. Uh, I don't really have a way out, unfortunately. I guess leaving the metamorph in play, maybe... Oh, you know what? Maybe I should, last turn I should have gone Gaunti block the cat, chump the chariot. So J I would have a Gaunti in play and Jaybro would have a chariot in play, and then I animate the metamorph copy the chariot and then i'd have gaunty two cats and chariot versus three cats and chariot that would have been better basically having a gaunty in play and a chariot in play i think would have been better for me but not that i was in good shape there either i guess it actually does work to cast dread whispers i go to three then I go to no no and then the derogatory speaker kills me then all right well mm. So let's go blow up Utopia Sprawl, drain you for two, land Elvish Mystic, and then pass. I don't really think this is a realistic way to, to win this game. Also, like even in the scenario I talked about where we had more stuff, like j Bro would have the Sprawl plus the, the Tree Speaker and just be able to cast something. And if he's not attacking with Tree Speaker, then it already means he was going to cast something. And that means that whatever is coming next, I would, yeah, there's no chance I was beating that. All right, uh, oh and two. Ooh, sorry team. <laughs> but uh, th these games, I mean, I got turn two Emrakuld and then I got turn one charioted in the games I lost. I lost to turn one Tinker. Like sometimes you get rolled and uh, it's more fun when you're on the other side, I'll tell you that much. Alrighty, time for round three. Let's see if I can get one. My team needs it. We are down. Uh, Currently one to four, so we need to get a little 4-0 run here. It's doable, right? Uh, this hand's keepable. I'm playing against like red, white, mid-range sort of thing, not like mega aggressive, I don't think. And uh, infernal grasp into maybe a big pest infestation sounds decent to me. If I draw blue, I can also play Leobold. And Mati is mulliganing here, so we'll see how this goes, but. At least this round, we're not going to get killed on turn one like we have the other two two rounds. Uh, so, not that there aren't plenty of other ways to lose instead. We're going to lead on just Blue Moon Marsh Go, I guess, and then kind of go from there. Maybe turn two Grasp, turn three Ritual Pest Infestation could be a play. Oh, turn on Restless Fine Stock. That was excellent. Because now we have turn three Leovold, which is going to be a nice little upgrade. Okay, I think Monty's splashing some black cards, huh? I guess we'll find out. Wow, drawing our first two draws were actually pretty great. Let's go Mesmeric Fiend here. And maybe we'll hit the only removal spell in hand. Maybe we'll take out the three drop. Opponent is tanking. Do you have like a reprieve in hand? That would make some sense. But Mesmeric Fiend... So one cool thing about Mesmeric Fiend is it it's the old template where it has this, this trigger where if it leaves play, 
you get the card back. If you kill in response to this trigger, you'd never get your card back. I'd just take a different card and it never comes back. So you don't want to do that. It's not one, it's not Kite Sail Freebooter, which that actually does work. Oh, what are we doing here? Are we just casting like a Cathar Commando or something? Oh, Leyline. Oh, that's just not the play you want to make. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that that's not going to work out well. Hmm. Uh, so what do I want to get rid of forever? Solitude or Seasoned Engineer? Probably Solitude. And uh, yeah, Mati in the chat said, oh no. <laughs> yep. Uh, so if I get rid of Solitude, yeah, that's great. Then it's gone again forever because I was just talking about that interaction. That's really funny. And then now, because of the Leyline Binding, I actually get to Pest Infestation, the Leyline Binding, and Fiend another card. And I'm going to use up the Dark Ritual to cast two creatures because why not? Cast Pest Infestation, and then take that Seasoned Engineer as well. And we know that's the last card. And so now the Seasoned Engineer could come back, but we're pretty far away from doing it. Your hand is Ephemerate, Ashen Rider. Oh, and we drew a Time Twister, so let's play Leonard here. Uh, actually, I guess I should technically attack first against like a flash creature or something. I'm, I'm actually not even gonna attack with the Mesmeric Fiend. There's just no reason to run into a Contain Priest or Cathar Commando. Like, yes, I understand I have Leovold and I'll probably attack with the Mesmeric Fiend next turn, but I just don't think having to cast Infernal Grasp on a crappy creature this turn is really what I wanna do. And, uh, well, we got a nice little, that, that Leyline Binding play on the Mesmeric Fiend really paid us off like this. This game made it so much easier because otherwise I would have taken the Leyline Binding and then, no, I guess I have Pest Infestation, so I would have just taken probably the Solitude and then Leyline Binding would have come down on Fiend and then I'd get to refiend. but Mahdi would have ended up with an extra card in hand, <laughs> which is, which is a, a pretty massive difference. And then next turn, I'm just going to cast Time Twister with Leo in play. I'm going to get to do all the things I was hoping to do with this, uh, with this deck. So... Look, I started out too. It's not ideal. Ooh, Imperial Seal's the next play, and I'm going to get to Leovold. This game is just like turning into a rout. <laughs> the, the, the Leyline Binding play was part of it, but also I had, either way, I had Pest Infestation for the Binding, and then I have Leo Time Twister. Like, my hand developed absurdly well. <laughs> Imperial Seal Concede. Yeah, that's a classic too. All right, well, still don't have a sideboard, so let's get in there, but... <clears throat> Okay, I told him I'm up a game. I'll get my one. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, hopefully we can we can make a, a bit of a comeback here. One cool thing about three on three drafts: there's no ties. We're gonna we're gonna win or we're gonna lose. I, I, I kind of like that. No conclusion. Uh, let's see. We're. We're not in bad shape against aggro. We've got Toxic Delusion. And Mati has a bit of a reanimator sneak attack sort of thing going, but has a bunch of, like, Seasoned Pyromancer, Skyclave Apparition, Seasoned Engineer Solitude, like, you know, the white mid-range aggro cards, whatever. We've got some so we've got some heavy hitters. Pest Infestation's nice. Technically, I have Fast Spot and Time Twister on my deck. Like, I could have a turn one, not kill, but there's a world where I go, like, turn one Fast Bond, play three lands, Time Twister... You know, play something else in the same turn. That would be sick. All right. Let's see. On the draw here. Oh, there's the turn one fast bond. Yeah, I'm going to keep this hand. Really would like a black land here. Because I go... Uh, there we go. Because I go turn one fast bond. Swamp. Waterlog Grove. I think I'm still going to play Karyatid here and I can play Deep Cavern Bat the next turn. There's not that many two drops I'm super scared of. Like, obviously that could end up going wrong, but it feels like getting out the mana dork 
is best. And then I can go deep cavern bat. And if I draw a land, I can go deep cavern bat, ritual, jar, pass. And then next turn, jar with fast bond and five lands in play is pretty nice. Demonic Tutor. Oh, this actually works fine because now Mati spent turn two casting Demonic Tutor and then I get to Deep Cavern Bat, whatever it gets tutored for. Well, I don't know what gets tutored for, but I can look at his hand and take the card that, <laughs> that I want to take. Oh, well, maybe not. Playing Mox Ruby against someone who you know has uh, Pest Infestation in their deck is a bit strange. I guess if you have Lightning Bolt, it makes sense. Um... Let's deep cavern bat here. Hand is Oliphant. Parallax wave, the wandering emperor. Interesting. Uh, huh. Didn't draw land, which is pretty unfortunate. Drew exploration, which is, I think literally the worst card I could have drawn in my entire deck. Because it with a fast bond in play doesn't do anything. Mm. Oliphant's gonna be able to fix your mana. Oh, you didn't cycle Oliphant response. I'm gonna get greedy. I'm gonna take the Oliphant. I guess I'll cast the Exploration so I don't draw it if I Time Twister. If Mati doesn't draw a Planes, can't cast either of his other spells, and they're both pretty good. No Planes, no Planes, no Planes, no Planes. Planes would be dangerous here. I think... Oh, that's not a Planes. <laughs> I'm just going to say my opponent's two for two and not... Oh... That's a seasoned engineer. Well, I couldn't stop that, and now he gets a planes off it. Ugh. I think I think both deep cavern at bat and mesmeric fiend. Uh, my opponent made some like not great choices regarding those cards. I think you got to cycle Oliphant in response there to get sacred foundry, because otherwise you might end up casting nothing. Though of course seasoned engineer is annoying. I guess I'll attack and take the initiative, and I think. I think I'm going to Parallax Wave here, or not Parallax Wave, Memory Jar here, because I can go Dark Ritual, Memory Jar, I think I'm just going to go Forest, and crack the jar and still have a decent amount of mana, and maybe do something good? I don't know, because I have Fast Bond out, so I get to play, play my lands. Oh, now I could Time Twister. But that doesn't do anything because of the jar. Oh, I can take the initiative. I can double initiative here. Hmm. I guess I'll go land, land, get by you, take another point of damage. I can play Under Mountain Adventure, and I think I'll just play the Mosswood Dread Knight as well. Uh, oh, I'm going. I'm already in the second thing because I just took it. Don't forge. I guess I actually do. Oh, this no, that can never block seasoned engineer. That that card is so good. Um, no, I already. I, oh, I'm not getting a land off this. Yeah, let's lost well here. Right, and put these both on the bottom. Okay, no, that actually worked out. Worked out fine, and there's no real point in casting. Uh, Inquisition or anything. World Spine Worm, Lightning Bolt, sure. All right, so the opponent has Parallax Wave, Wandering Emperor in hand. Seasoned Engineer was an absurdly good top deck. It was like drawing a planes, but way better because it also lets you get the planes and cast the, <laughs> the, those things while uh, getting the initiative and, and whacking. All right, I'm at 10. You get to go into the forge for your Seasoned Engineer. And I need to draw Infernal Grasp pretty badly. Unfortunately, my Time Twister's gone. We're, we're going to get hit by a Parallax Wave here. It's almost a, a guarantee. Pest Infestation is my draw. That If I draw Pest Infestation, like we are we are on. Okay, okay. We've got, we've got some outs here. I've got a lot of mana. I can crack Waterlog Grove. I just scribed two to the bottom. Feels like there's some... Uh, there's some possibilities here. Yep, you parallax wave my two things. Pest infestation. No, Odo War is interesting. I can bounce the parallax wave, and I'll go right into the initiative, plus I'll take something out of your hand. Oh, I can take the parallax wave out of hand. Interesting. I'm at 10. Oh, I guess I still just die. 
because this thing just attacks and I can't do anything about it. I could, I guess I could technically Odawara that, but you know what? I'm going to draw a card. Either way, I think drawing a card here is good. Okay, so. <laughs> Land, I guess I just have to say go. Because uh, I'm going to get trapped down to five and then this thing attacks me and I guess I just have to bounce it. This is horrible. Seasoned Engineer is such a messed up card. So, I guess now I'm taking five. Yeah, I just can't bounce the Parallax Wave where I die to that thing. Bouncing the Engineer barely gets me any anywhere, but I mean, I got nothing better to do here. It, it does buy me some time because it comes back as a 3-4, but now you get to play it, go to the archives, and then next turn you're going to Throne of the Dead 3. So my out is still, it's still Pest Infestation because then I take the initiative back and at least delay the last chapter of the Undercity. Undercity. <laughs> one of the reasons I'm sad that the Time Twister is gone is one of my ways to win this game was like an incredible Time Twister, like a Time Twister where I hit every card I want. But... That doesn't seem likely at this point in time. Okay, so presumably this is the Dungeoneer. Yep. Get to draw a card. And Toxic Dealers. Nope. All right. Going to game three here. That we are. That we are. Pest Infestation, a very... Uh, strong card in this matchup I believe and I think I think now is when we're due for our, our ridiculous fast bond time twister draw like everyone else has gotten their like turn ones can I get my turn one <laughs> newsflash you don't deserve anything I uh, don't think I want tendrils or days here might stone or weak stone mana morphos I, I don't need any of that I just need a good fast bond draw. That's all I need. All right, I'd like to play first. I mean, turn one by you, noble. Turn two, mesmeric fiend. Also, wither bloom command with with a misty means I guaranteed get to uh, get it land back. So I will get the by you, and I'll play noble. Pass the turn, and I get to mesmeric fiend and see what's going on. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean, actually, that's that's annoying, but the the Witherbloom command does help. All right, let's go, Mesmeric Fiend. What do you got? Demonic Tutor, Skyclave, Apparition Solitude. I see. Um, it's possible that that Monty doesn't have double white here, because Scalding Tarn with a Sacred Foundry already in place, Scalding Tarn might not get white. I think I'm just gonna take the Demonic Tutor. Because otherwise, just turn two, you could just cast Demonic Tutor for... The best card in his deck is probably better than Skyclave Apparition. So I think that's fine. If he's now debating whether to play the Xander's Lounge because he might cycle it, that would be cool. All right, I drew a Blooming Marsh. Here's where the Noble dying was kind of unfortunate because now it would have been nice to this turn just cast one of my awesome four drops. Instead, I'm just going to Wither Bloom here and get back let's go ahead and drain you and mill um i will mill three cards and you will lose life because if i hit a restless vine stock i'd rather pick that up yeah i did not and so i will take the misty but i will play blooming marsh Oh, I guess I actually might not have even taken Vine Stock because of uh, Blooming Marsh had to be played this turn. All right, no planes? No planes or spell. Hmm. Okay. Mox Ruby, sure. Skyclave, so we know the three cards in hand then. All right, well, you've got a Demonic Tutor in hand. Ah, uh, this is so annoying. I drew a good card. Inquisition is a good card, but 
I really don't want to spend, it's so bad to cast Inquisition this turn. I'm just going to cast Gaunti. I'll let you tutor. I, I just can't, can't do that. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> Reprieve, Sneak Attack, Season Pyro. <laughs> I could take World Spine Worm to strand like some of these things, but I'm already sending Sneak away. Well, I guess the Demonic Tutor is going to go get it or go shuffle. Season Pyro is okay. The problem with Season Pyro that I found is if it dies, it goes to their graveyard and they can do the little flashback thing. <clears throat> I don't want Sneak Attack. I don't want World Spine Worm. I think, I think I'm going to take Reprieve. I, my, my goal here is to uh, set up Shieldred Jar and... I think that I can I can figure out a way to do that. Because what I want, to, the reason I cast Ngonti this turn, I want to either next turn go be able to go Shieldred plus Inquisition or something else. All right, well, let's start with Inquisition. And we're going to take Demonic Tutor. Your hand's Blood Tithe Harvester. And Solitude, yeah, we'll take Demonic Tutor. And then I'll cast Leovold. And you can Solitude my Leovold and I'll draw a card. And that, that'll be fine with me. I'm just going to pass because otherwise I get attacked by Solitude. Okay. Draw my card. And then hopefully... Hopefully you don't kill the Gaunti this turn, because I would like to be able to. <sighs> All right, well, there goes my Shieldred, I guess. Yeah, it's it's tough. I'm trying to set these things up and then just uh, immediately draws planes, immediately draws Concealing Courtyard is disrupting me. It's not like this is a terrible spot. This is still a pretty close game. Like, Gaunti can trade with Solitude and is keeping back Skyclave. Oh uh, yeah, like Infernal Grasp is decent. Your hand is now Scalding Tarn plus Blood Tithe, so it's not even clear that you can play those this turn. And I'm going to get to go Jar soon enough here. Yeah, I'll trade. That's fine. And then I, the Jar with a bunch of lands in play can hopefully get me some action. Okay, you do have a black land to get off that, presumably. Yeah, so all right. Blood Tithe's down. And I drew Bloodstained Mire. Let's cast Sylvan Karyatid. Pass the turn. I have re Reprieve up. And I'm also going to get to... I could blow up the Skyclave Apparition. Or... The revealing eye because I can infernal grasp skyclave. I get a two two. It blocks the blood tithe, and I take three. Or I could just blow up the three four and block the skyclave and take three. So the question is, what would I rather have destroyed? I think I'd rather just kill the the three four menace because that is a little bit tougher. Oh, what you do, wandering emperor? Oh, uh, this is actually going to work out okay. Because now I Infernal Grasp the Skyclave. I could Reprieve, but I actually like doing this instead. Because then I get to kill the Skyclave. I take some damage. I'll crack this end of turn. Just get a Swamp. It's fine. Now I can attack the Wandering Emperor here. And I have Reprieve up for this turn. 14. All right. I mean, this is going to be a close game, but if my opponent draws <laughs> an awesome spell every turn, I'm going to lose pretty badly. I take 6 down to 8 this turn. All right, Blood Token getting used, maybe? That'd be a start. All right. And hopefully nothing? Okay, land. I didn't draw anything. So Wandering Emperor, make a 2-2? Two -two? Yeah. And I'm not going to sack the peat land because I'm about to have a, a jar hand full of stuff to play. So you certainly are attacking with Revealing Eye. I think you attack with both here. Okay, I go to eight. We got a turn off. Opponent did miss on this draw step at least. Draw. 
I'll play my land off the jar, I think. Also, I would like my opponent to not draw good uh, good spells to play here. Okay, so here, this is a start. Let's go land from the Catacombs the Solitude, I think. Because if I from the Catacombs Solitude, I then get to exile the Samurai token and attack the Wandering Emperor. And go get a land. Attack Wandering Emperor and hope that that works out. Looks like it will. Okay. And then now, Fast Bond. Land seven, land I'm at six, uh, cycle Odawara on the, the revealing eye here. And lightning bolt's already gone because that's going to get uh, discarded to the to jar here. And I'll go to three and play this. And yeah, if I die to a bolt, I die to a bolt. So be it. This cycling Oliphant, that's what I thought. Okay. Thinning out a mountain, that's fine. And discarding, hopefully, Parallax Wave, among other things. Ashen Rider, Life Death, Phantasmal Image, Concealing Cards, and Lands. All right, that wasn't so bad. One card, don't, don't top deck, don't top deck. You can hit with the Blood Tithe, I'll block. And then I probably win the game from there. If this, I mean, if this turn wasn't a great block, a great draw, then yeah, I go to six, and then I, I have the initiative. Uh, you're at nineteen. I'm just gonna go to the forge here. I think I think we're we're very close to winning this game. So yeah, because we have infinite gas for from the catacombs. Let's go dark ritual from the catacombs. Shieldred, I think. I could get ashen rider. You only have. Two planes. Yeah, I'm at 19, you're at six. Yeah, let's get Ashen Rider. Boom. And exile some junk, I guess. Actually, I don't want to exile all my land. All right. And that also gets me to let's kill the Sacred Foundry. This also gets me to trap. So you're basically dead next turn and I have reprieve up. Yeah, so this this should be it. Land. I could I could also uh, anim from the catacombs again, but I don't think I need to do that because I think I'm just going to animate this and attack with both and I actually even get to target this to make it a it's one bigger because it's a base 2-2. Two, two. So take 10. And I'm at six now, and I have a reprieve up, and you only have a single white. So this looks like it's going to be pretty tough to come back from. We got our one match. Yes. Boom. We did. And uh, let's see if we can salvage this draft here, shall we? In a not-so-shocking twist, we did not win this draft. We tried our hardest. Or maybe. Uh, I, I can't speak for everyone. I certainly did, and uh, I got one win out of the deal. Honestly, this draft was, even though we got smashed, it's kind of nice to condense all the like ridiculous games into one where like turn one Tinker Citadel hit Time Warp or turn two Emrakul or turn three Land Lotus Utopia Sprawl Seekers Chariot. Those are all things that you just saw happen. Look, some amount of those games happen. Some of them are on your side. You feel great when you do it. It's awesome. Some on their side and it's like, wow, I got smashed. And if I'm going to have those things happen, having them all kind of in a short time period, yeah, not so bad. <laughs> I still have fun, even though uh, sometimes just the broken stuff is on the other side of the table. This deck was sweet, though. I mean, looking at this deck, it was a totally solid deck. It's not winning any awards, but it's got good mana for a three-color deck. I never really ran into mana issues that sense. It's got Fast Bond and Exploration with Twister and Jar. It's got Shieldred and Leovold with those two things. Uh, Undermount Adventure and From the Catacombs, some good initiative cards. Pest Infestation's kind of busted. It's even got, like... Infernal Grasp and Toxic Deluge's removal, and then Mesmeric Fiend, Deep Cavern Vat, and Inquisition as hand disruption. So 
Sure, adding a thought phase to this deck would have made it better. Maybe one more piece of removal would have been nice, but overall this was just a totally solid deck and uh, we got we got kind of creamed by some really fast good draws that most decks would lose to. But that'll end it for today. When next time we'll hopefully do better. Thanks for watching. Uh, sometimes you draft Sultai stuff and uh, sometimes you don't. Tomorrow I'll be back with another cube draft and as always, I appreciate you hanging out. I'll see you then. Let's get some more Cuban in, shall we?